and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today I wanted to talk to you, well actually I wanted to have a chat with you, just a casual informal conversation about how to improve your conversation skills. So I recently asked all of my students on Facebook and Instagram what sort of videos they'd like to see in the near future because I have had a little bit of a rest recently but I'm back in the game now. And most people wanted to see more grammar videos, which will definitely be coming soon, more vocabulary videos, and also tips on how to improve their spoken English and also their listening skills. Now I've already done a video on listening, which you can watch just up here, but I haven't done a video on conversation yet. So that's what I'm going to do today, but I am going to provide you with some real vocabulary and some very useful grammar so I've squished everything that you wanted into one video. All right, let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one is be aware of the sounds that you make when you think. If you want to sound more native when speaking and not offend anyone when speaking, then you need to think like an Englishman. When I was in Spain, I was quite surprised when I first had proper conversations with people because they would be talking to me and then they would suddenly say, and I would think, what, what is that? That's quite loud. Their mouth right open. In the UK, it's considered impolite to have your mouth open in somebody's face. So when we think about what we're going to say next in a conversation, we tend to say, um, or hmm. So we tend to hum with our mouth closed. So try practicing that at home. If you see any interviews of British celebrities or personalities, check to see what sort of noises they make when they are thinking about how to respond to a question. The next tip is be aware of interjections. Now, what are interjections? Well, they are short little expressions that express how you are feeling. So if I say something like, oh, it means I'm interested. Maybe I haven't heard that before. Maybe I'm a bit surprised. Oh, and if I say something like, hmm, it could mean I don't quite believe you. So people from the UK are less inclined to tell you exactly what they think and more inclined to tell you through interjections and body language. If you'd like more information on interjections like, oh, right, yuck, ew, then I can definitely make a video all about them. It really is good to learn them because it will help you understand what the speaker is thinking and also convey what you are thinking as well. Tip number four is learn to use question tags properly. Now, what are question tags? They are short little questions that go at the end of sentences. Things like, you're not married, are you? Or, he didn't go, did he? Or, you like tea, don't you? Now, they, have, they can mean two different things. They can be a genuine question, or they can be almost a request for confirmation of something that the speaker already knew. You're very tanned. You've been on holiday, haven't you? I know that they've been on holiday. I'm just asking for confirmation. Now, question tags are very simple to form and use. If you have a positive statement, you are coming, then you'd add a negative question tag on the end. Aren't you? You are coming, aren't you? And if you have a negative sentence, she didn't say that, then you add a positive question tag at the end. Did she? She didn't say that, did she? Right, now we've spoken a little bit about noises, a bit of vocabulary and a bit of grammar that you can use to improve your conversation skills. Well, now I'd like to talk about some real hardcore practice. So when I was working as a private English teacher, a lot of people wanted conversation lessons and they would come in and say, I just want to talk, which is great. But I had a small handful of students that really knew how to improve their conversation skills. And I actually learned from them. I had a couple of students come in and say, I want conversation lessons, but I want to practice my stories. And this was great. They would come in with a handful of stories that they would tell on a daily basis, maybe where you're from, 
while you're living in London, something funny that happened to you on your holiday. Something that they like to tell, they like to be interesting, they like to be funny in group situations. It's good to have a few stories up your sleeve. Well, they would come to me and they would ask to practice them and perfect them so that they could tell their stories fluently and efficiently and make people laugh and make people feel interested and make people enjoy their company. So I really, really recommend that, apart from practicing your conversation, you practice your stories. You go over them again and again and again until you have them sorted, until they're perfect and fluent and natural more than anything. Now you guys already know that I work with a company called Lingoda. If you haven't seen my review video for Lingoda, you can find it just up here. And this is a website that I really would recommend if you want to practice your conversation because every single one of their lessons encourages speaking. You sign up on a monthly basis and you have a mixture of group lessons and private lessons. And the great thing about it is with the private lessons, you can choose the topic that you want. You can say, right, today I want to practice my stories and they will organize that for you. So they've given me another discount voucher to offer you. You can get 50 euros or $50 off your first month at Lingoda. If you're interested in that offer, click on the link in the description box. Now, my final tip for you is reflection. It's all very well going to a language exchange and speaking and speaking and speaking. But if you don't reflect on your mistakes, you're never going to improve. So after every single conversation that you have in the language that you're trying to learn, make sure you take some time afterwards to think back and ask yourself, where was I lacking? And there could be a multitude of answers. I didn't know enough vocabulary to properly express myself, or my listening skills weren't strong enough to fully understand my partner, or I was telling a story and I wasn't comfortable enough with the past tenses to tell it accurately. So make sure you analyze and reflect and then do some research about it so you can practice what you lacked in in the last conversation. Now, the world is your oyster here on YouTube. You just have to type in question tags, interjections, past tenses, and there will be some lovely person teaching you exactly how to use it. You have just got so many dictionaries, apps, online schools. There is everything that you need to help you here online. So make sure you take advantage of it. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Instagram and my Facebook where I host a free live pronunciation lesson every Sunday at 4.30 GMT. More information on the Facebook page. I will see you soon for another lesson. I've got lots of grammar and vocabulary videos coming out soon. I can't wait to show you them. Mwah.